good afternoon children welcome to today's class uh, hope you have uh, learned the previous lesson properly you have uh, understood that well today we will continue the same chapter uh, and uh, today we are going to discuss mixtures so let's start Today we are going to discuss mixture, its characteristics, types of mixture, differences between compounds and the mixture and separation of mixtures. So what is the mixture? Definition can be given as the mixture can be defined as kind of matter which is formed by mixing two or more pure substances. It may be element or compound or both may be there in any proportion such that they do not undergo any chemical change and retain their individual properties. That means when we are going to get a mixture, the components do not undergo any chemical change. There will be no chemical change between them like uh, compound when we are uh, we will get uh, a compound from uh, two or three or more uh, substances there will be a chemical change between them but during formation of a mixture there will be no chemical change as such and uh, the components retain their individual properties therefore the mixtures are impure substances because two or more uh, pure substances are there mixed so what are the characteristics of mixture? A mixture consists of two or more pure substances that exist together without any chemical combination between them. A mixture may be homogeneous or heterogeneous. What is homogeneous and what is heterogeneous? Uh, just now we are going to learn. Uh, the properties, uh, the components of mixtures vary in their proportions. There will be no uh, proper proportion for the mixture. There will be no fixed proportion for the mixtures. Like uh, if we uh, make a salt solution or sugar solution in, uh, in water, we can mix uh, one uh, spoonful of uh, sugar or salt or we can make it two spoonful of uh, sugar or salt. That means the proportions may vary. Mixtures do not have fixed melting and boiling point as the proportion is not fixed so uh, that will depend on the proportion of the components present in them. So if we mix more sugar or more salt in water then its uh, boiling point will increase. The boiling point of the mixture will increase. So it will depend on the proportion or the concentration of the solution. The components of mixtures can be separated by simple physical method. Simple physical method means it may be boiling or freezing or evaporation. So these are simple physical methods. By these methods we can uh, separate the components of a mixture. But that we cannot do for compounds. For that to separate the components of a compound we have to use the uh, critical chemical uh, methods. Usually no energy change takes place during the formation of mixtures. There will be no uh, loss or gain of energy or heat, uh, uh, evolution of heat or uh, absorption of heat is not mandatory for during the formation of mixture. Mixtures cannot be represented by any chemical formula. We cannot represent a mixture by any chemical formula because the, uh, in a mixture we will get two or more components mixed together uh, without any chemical bond that means the both of the components are there in a mixture and uh, so it cannot be represented by any chemical formula so what are the types of mixture mixture uh, are generally two types of mixtures are there 
one is homogeneous and another is heterogeneous so what is homogeneous mixture this term homo means same that means the in the in the mixture the components are uniformly distributed throughout its volume uh, and it cannot be seen separately uh, that means that everywhere in the mixture uh, the components or the particles will be uh, distributed equally evenly uniformly so it cannot be seen separately like tap water or sugar solution or air in uh, these are all these three are mixtures but here we cannot see the uh, particles of the uh, sugar solution or air uh, separately it cannot be seen separately in a sugar solution when we will dissolve sugar in water the sugar particles will get dissolved in water and it will form a uniform mixture we cannot separately see the uh, sugar particles the same manner air composed of different gases but uh, in uh, in air we cannot separately uh, distinguish the gases in that manner so these are called these uh, these are the examples of homogeneous mixture the mixtures are homogeneous whereas heterogeneous mixture hetero this term means different this uh, in this kind of mixture the components are not uniformly distributed throughout its volume and they can be easily seen separately like uh, mud and water we can see the mud particles in water floating the floating mud particles can be seen easily in muddy water in the same manner sand and stone the particles of sand and stone can be seen separately in uh, in sand and stone uh, mixture okay because the their uh, size shape and colors are different they are uh, not evenly distributed uniformly uh, distribution is uniform distribution is not there okay in the same manner oil and water mixture there also we can see two different layer of oil and water because they are immiscible they cannot mix together properly so all these mixtures all these examples are of heterogeneous mixture here you can uh, uh, you can understand it properly the homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture the difference between them here you can see for homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture in both the cases we have taken purple balls or particles and green particles or balls here in homogeneous mixture you can see the purple balls and the green balls are distributed uniformly see everywhere it is distributed properly uniformly everywhere the composition of this uh, two colors balls are same components are same everywhere the proportions uh, of this two color balls are same so it is homogeneous mixture but in case of heterogeneous mixture here in this portion upper portion we can see the purple balls and in the lower part of this mixture we can see the green balls so here the concentration or the number of particles of the green balls are more than this part and here the purple balls are more okay so the particles are not evenly or uniformly distributed somewhere the proportion of the purple particles are more and somewhere the proportion or the concentration of the green particles are more so these are called this mixture is heterogeneous mixture here you can see some examples of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture air salt water sugar water brass brass uh, is an alloy uh, mixture of two solid substances two solid uh, metals this is again a homogeneous mixture solutions different solutions these are also homogeneous see here you can you cannot separately uh, see the particles in the solutions so these are homogeneous mixture for heterogeneous mixture see soil sand and water mixture uh, 
uh, these are heterogeneous mixture we can see see this uh, sand and uh, stone this is also heterogeneous now come to the differences between compounds and mixture so what is the difference between them compound is a pure substance because in a compound only uh, same kind of particles are there whereas mixture is an impure substance because two or more kind of particles are, are there present in a mixture compounds are always homogeneous because the particles are uh, the uh, particles or molecules are uniformly distributed throughout the volume but mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous compound has a fixed composition that is uh, it's formed when two or more pure substances chemically combine in a definite ratio by mass as chemical combination is there so we, uh, we are going to get a whole new compound uh, and so they are having a definite composition fixed composition but for mixture as there are no such fixed composition that is uh, formed by mixing two or more substances in any ratio without any chemical reaction so there will be no fixed composition for mixture for, uh, suppose for compound hydrogen and oxygen they will mix together they will uh, chemically combine together to form water molecule so for water we can give a fixed composition of water as H2O this is the composition or uh, formula of water chemical formula of uh, water but for mixture if we mix sugar in water as sugar will not form any chemical bond with uh, water so there will be both the composition of sugar water will be both sugar and water both are present there so we cannot uh, represent it by any fixed composition next formation of a compound involves a change in energy that we know energy change is must for uh, during formation of a compound but during formation of a mixture it doesn't evolve involve any change in energy energy change is not mandatory during the formation of a mixture for compounds there will be a specific set of properties but mixtures do not have any specific set of properties why because in any proportion we can mix the uh, constituent substances here and mixture do not have any specific set of property because here all the ingredient or all the components they retain their own properties whereas for compounds the component uh, components of a compound they have lost their property and they will form a whole new set of property while we will get a new compound components of compounds can be separated only by complex chemical processes but for mixtures by simple physical methods of separation the components of mixture can be separated so these are the differences between compounds and mixtures next move on uh, to separation of mixture how we can separate the mixture so before doing that we need to know why we uh, need to separate the mixture what is the purpose of separation so uh, to uh, why we need to separate the mixtures components of mixture we need to remove the unwanted and harmful substances okay to get the pure and useful substances or uh, from the mixtures if we want to get the pure substances or uh, useful substances we need to separate the unwanted or harmful substances so we need to separate the mixture separate the components of mixture so to understand this uh, suppose uh, let us uh, give an example uh, suppose in pearls uh, or in grain some stones may be mixed there so stones are unwanted and harmful to us we cannot intake those 
uh, along with the pulses or grains so we need to throw them out to get the pure and useful pulse or grain so we need to separate the uh, stones or unwanted substances from the pulse what is the principle of separation that will be uh, that will depend on these three points three things first of all the types of mixture and their physical state uh, the mixture are solid or liquid or solid liquid mixture uh, that means their physical states on that the principle of separation will depend uh, this will be more clear when we will go for the examples okay uh, next size shape and color of the mixtures uh, suppose uh, for the pulse and uh, stone mixture uh, as the stone and pulse their color shape and uh, size are different so we can easily uh, recognize them separately and we can uh, separate them next characteristic properties of the components of the mixture depending on the characteristic property we will be choosing the separation technique so this these three things this uh, principle of separation will be uh, more clear when we will go for the uh, the practical examples uh, or when we will discuss the examples one by one so let's do that first of all cv this is very uh, it's a well known uh, process we can see in our kitchen we generally used to do that and uh, mm, suppose in flour or rice flour uh, some uh, bran is uh, mixed together or husk is uh, there so to remove those or uh, maybe some uh, stones are there or uh, unwanted particles may be mixed with that so to separate those we uh, we will use this seed okay here uh, as the powdery uh, uh, rice flour or uh, wheat flour or uh, this uh, uh, the useful substances which uh, we are going to use so uh, as these are fine so uh, the particles are very small in size so they can go through this small hole of the seed but the larger particles unwanted particles they will left behind so by using the sieve, uh, sieve we can separate the unwanted particles from the pure one next magnetic separation this magnetic separation we, we can use where uh, any one of the uh, mixture any uh, one component of the mixture will be magnetic substance like uh, iron um, nickel cobalt magnetic substance means they will be uh, they will get attracted by the magnet so here we have taken sulfur and iron filling the mixture of sulfur and iron filling so here one of the component that means iron is uh, this this is magnetic substance so they will uh, get attracted by the magnet and so if we bring the magnet uh, on this mixture then iron particles iron fillings will get attracted uh, it will get stuck to this magnet but sulfur will uh, it will left behind in the container only as sulfur is non-magnetic so it will not uh, get stuck to this magnet so in this manner we can separate the iron fillings from the sulfur so for any kind of uh, any uh, magnetic substance where one of the component is magnetic substance we can use this separation technique so these things are called uh, the separation technique is depending on the properties of the substances here the property of the iron filling is to get attracted by the magnet so the attraction property is the cause of choosing this separation technique next come to the sedimentation technique what is that uh, 
this technique we are going to use where one of the particles one of the components are having wet so here we have taken sand and sawdust the mixture of sand and sawdust so how to separate that both the particles are Mm, uh, we cannot use any other process to separate them uh, both the particles can be uh, mixed together and uh, cannot be separated in that manner uh, by hand picking and all so what we are going to do we will add water in it now both are insoluble sand and sawdust both cannot get dissolved in water but as sand particles are heavy in weight than the sawdust so sand particles will settle down they will come down at the bottom of the container or bottom of the beaker and they will settle down in this manner at the bottom of the beaker but sawdust as it's light in weight so it will float on the upper portion of the water so this settling down of the heavy particles because of the gravity gravitational force is called sedimentation so after that, after uh, the sedimentation process, we can uh, decant this part, this uh, sawdust and uh, water, we can uh, just decant it. So what is decantation? We are going to uh, get that right now. So by decantation, we can separate, we can uh, transfer the liquid, the water and the sawdust together in another container and we can get the sand. We can separate the sand in this manner. So this is decantation. What is that? See, this is the sand, or in this we will call as sediment. Any uh, heavy particles uh, can be of can be called as sediment, which will settle down at the bottom of the uh, container, or which will be settled down, or which uh, after the sedimentation process, the uh, heavy particles which we are going to get that is called sediment only okay and the supernatant liquid is the liquid which will be above the sediment which we are getting okay this is lighter than the sediment so the uh, above the sediment whatever uh, liquid we are getting uh, that is called sediment uh, that is called su uh, supernatant liquid so in a mixture these two things are there sediment and supernatant now using a glass rod this is a nothing but a rod made of glass so this is glass rod so from this beaker slowly without disturbing the sediment we can transfer the supernatant liquid to another beaker see slowly we will be pouring the uh, supernatant liquid through the glass rod okay slowly we will be uh, transferring the liquid to a to another beaker so this process is called decanting or decantation okay next evaporation process this is very uh, well known process uh, from using this process we can get from sea water we can make the salt okay so here we, we will be taking the mixture salt and water mixture and in a this is called evaporating dish so in this dish we will be taking the mixture salt and water and uh, using a bunsen burner we are going to heat the mixture now as we are heating this the temperature of the uh, water this will rise this will increase and the water from liquid state it will convert to the vapor state so uh, by uh, forming water vapor the watery part this part will go away and the after after some time we will see only the salt because salt cannot evaporate salt uh, it will remain in the container in the evaporating dish so this process is called evaporation by uh, evaporating the water by making it as a water vapor by uh, converting it to the water vapor we will get the salt we will get back the salt okay next 
filtration process this process we can uh, at a home we have seen this uh, every day we can see this during the formation of during the making of tea uh, to separate tea leaves we will use the stainer so this this is called filtration this process is called filtration as the uh, tea leaves are uh, bigger in size so they will left behind in the stainer see we have seen no? this uh, tea leaves uh, they will left behind in the stainer and we will be getting the tea so here in the come to this picture here we have taken chalk in water chalk cannot get dissolved in water so they will float uh, in water so how to separate that we will be using a filter paper here okay filter paper is nothing but a uh, just a, a paper paper cone uh, so this we will be placing in this uh, filter in this funnel and uh, we will just uh, pour the water and chalk mixture in the through uh, in this funnel through the filter paper so as filter paper having a uh, having very small holes so the particles uh, the filter paper will allow only the water watery part or uh, water through it through the holes of the filter paper but the chalk as and the chalk particles are bigger in size so they will left behind in the filter paper they will get stuck to the holes uh, the filter paper will not allow the chalk particles to pass through it so it will uh, left behind in the funnel uh, in the filter paper which is called uh, this is called residue okay and the water which will come through this uh, funnel uh, through the filter paper and then uh, through the funnel this is called filtrate so this chalk this is called residue see you can see the white part this is the chalk particles this and uh, this will be called as residue and the water which will come uh, go through the which will pass through the filter paper that is called filtrate so here uh, during the uh, making of tea residue is tea leaves and tea is the filtrate next come to sublimation so what is that sublimation is the process this we have done in, in our first chapter sublimation uh, so there are a uh, few substances which uh, will directly go from the solid state to the vapor state so those substances will show sublimation so ammonium chloride is such a substance which will show this sublimation process so if ammonium chloride this will uh, if we take the mixture of ammonium chloride and common salt table salt uh, sodium chloride then both are look alike both are uh, solid white crystals so if we mix this two ammonium chloride and uh, sodium chloride together we cannot separate them through other means other uh, separation techniques so here we will use the property of sublimation of ammonium chloride ammonium chloride can sublime but sodium chloride cannot do that okay so uh, what we are going to do in this process in this china dish we will be taking the mixture of ammonium chloride and sodium chloride and we are going to heat that but before that we will invert a funnel on the china dish and we will put some cotton plug here so that the ammonium chloride paper cannot uh, go out of the uh, funnel okay so when we will heat that ammonium chloride will vaporize it will uh, sublime and in this inner wall of the test uh, inner wall of the funnel it will again uh, cool down and it will form the it will uh, deposit here in this manner okay so the solid ammonium chloride will be uh, it will deposit in the inner wall of the funnel and here in the china dish 
uh, sodium chloride it will remain as it will uh, sodium chloride uh, cannot show sublimation so it will remain in the china dish but ammonium chloride will vaporize and again it will uh, deposit in this part of the funnel so in this manner we can separate this ammonium chloride and sodium chloride any any substance which will show sublimation like iodine or camphor or benzoic acid so any substance which will show sublimation uh, if that will be mixed with another substance which is uh, which will not show sublimation then we can use this sublimation process to separate those components of the mixture okay so this is all for today now we are going to we will be uh, doing the worksheet we will uh, discuss the worksheet which was given in the in our previous class but before doing that you just here you pause the video you go through the uh, discussion whatever we have uh, we did uh, today uh, you just go through that you go through the study material and then come back we will be uh, starting the discussion of the worksheet okay and uh, do today uh, today's worksheet uh, also will be there that you have to do you know that uh, regularly you have to go through the worksheet and you have to solve those so just here you pause the video and come back soon so this worksheet was given This was given in our uh, last class. So, what is the uh, first question? Classify the following substances. Achha, here, uh, I, I want to tell you something. If you don't have paper, pen, and paper with you, you pause the video and uh, bring those. Okay. Uh, let's start now. Classify the following substances into elements and compounds so how you will uh, do this kind of questions how you will uh, write down the answers you just make two columns one for element and another for compound so the elements you will be writing on the element column and uh, compounds you will be writing in the compound column okay mercury this is the this is uh, an element so you will be writing this the element column sulfur this is again it's a non metal so it's an element sugar this is a compound water it's a compound sand it is silicon dioxide this is a compound gold this is an element carbon this is an element oxygen an element alcohol it's a compound iron element marble this is a compound calcium carbonate is the formula uh, calcium carbonate is the chemical name sorry so marble is the compound baking soda again it's a compound baking soda is sodium bicarbonate okay next give the symbols of carbon carbon is C calcium Ca copper C O uh, C U copper is C U Q from chlorine Cl, cobalt, Co, argon, Ar. Okay. Next, define elements and compounds. This you will do your own. You will get the answer in the study material. Okay. Next, name the elements which form water. So, water, the uh, constituent elements are hydrogen and oxygen state three characteristic of water to justify that it is a compound this again you will get in your study material so how to do that how to write that uh, the first one first point is in in water the um, proportion of hydrogen and oxygen is fixed 
proportion of hydrogen and oxygen is fixed so uh, from anywhere uh, we can collect the water the proportion will be fixed so this is first characteristic of water uh, first characteristic of a compound so, which we are getting in water next uh, during the formation of water evolution of heat is there that means change of energy can be seen uh, during the formation of water uh, the properties of water is totally different than that of the constituent elements hydrogen and oxygen both are uh, gases whereas water is a it's a liquid okay so their properties are again different so this is another uh, uh, another justification of uh, justification of water being a compound okay so any other uh, justification also you can write this you will be getting in the study material okay so these are the important characteristics uh, which i said next state four important characteristics of compound this again you can write from uh, from the study material just uh, try to understand the point understand the points and write you in your own word okay so here i want to uh, tell you something in uh, today's class along with uh, today's uh, study material and all i will be providing you the curriculum which you can get in the uh, web, uh, website of uh, this uh, council's website also you can get the curriculum so you just go through that uh, this is a kind of syllabus of yours okay so you just go through that uh, there will be uh, all the questions or whatever we, uh, we are going to do that will be just uh, we will follow the curriculum everywhere okay no need to do anything extra if we are doing it's okay but uh, we will be following the curriculum next how is sodium chloride different from its constituent elements sodium and chlorine in its property uh, justify so in sodium chloride uh, we know that sodium chloride uh, will be formed uh, from sodium and chlorine sodium is solid it's a very uh, reactive solid soft metal whereas chlorine is again it's a, it's a poisonous uh, greenish yellow gas so when these two will react together we will get sodium chloride which is a very useful substance and which is non-poisonous okay so here we can see the constituent elements property will be lost when we will get a compound a whole new compound here okay so this again it's there in the study material you just go through that next name the elements present in the following compounds sugar in sugar we will have carbon oxygen and hydrogen in ammonia we will be having nitrogen and hydrogen nh3 is the formula so nitrogen and hydrogen in marble this is calcium carbonate so calcium carbon and oxygen are the elements present washing soda this is sodium carbonate so sodium carbon and oxygen Achha. washing soda there will be uh, along with uh, the formula is na2co3.10 h2o so uh, there will be hydrogen as well so sodium carbon oxygen along with hydrogen washing soda next what is the proportion of sorry what is the proportion of elements present in the following compounds uh, h2o this will be 2 h to 1 hydrogen is to oxygen 2 h to 1 next carbon is to in carbon dioxide there will be 
कार्बोनिस्ट ऑक्सीजन विल बी वन इज टू टू वन इज टू टू कार्बोनिस्ट ऑक्सीजन फॉर कैल्शियम ऑक्साइड दिस इज कैल्शियम इस्ट ऑक्सीजन विल बी वन इज टू वन एंड फॉर इनो टू नाइट्रोजन डाइऑक्साइड दिस विल बी नाइट्रोजन इस्ट ऑक्सीजन विल बी वन इज टू टू सो दिस इज ऑल फॉर टूडे स्टूडेंट्स so this is all for today you just uh, do your studies properly go through the study material go through the worksheet and uh, again go through the curriculum okay so uh, just uh, do your studies properly be safe have a good day thank you bye bye